so today I want to talk about two of the arguably most important currencies in our lives, money and happiness. And the question that I want to focus on more specifically is whether we can use one of them to get more of the other. So can money buy happiness? Okay, so let's start by looking at me at the age of three. You can see I've barely changed at all since. Now my grandma had bought me this beautiful garden gnome, and I loved it so much that I just wouldn't stop hugging it, even though you probably agree that it's not exactly the greatest hugging material. So in this case, the money my grandma had invested really did buy the happiness it was expected to buy. That day, I was pretty much the happiest person alive. Now, before we draw any overly hasty conclusions from this story, let's look at me again. This time on Christmas Eve at the age of seven. So my parents had scraped together all their savings to buy me this badass bike here. And they had been excited for weeks to give it to me. Now, as you can probably tell from the somewhat fake and forced smile on my face, it didn't quite turn out the way they had expected. It was basically a Christmas tragedy um, that involved a lot of crying on my end and a lot of general unhappiness on Christmas Eve. Now, why? Because what I had asked my parents for was not a badass bike, but actually this really, really girly Barbie caravan here. Now, imagine how disappointed I was um, when I found out that not only had I not got the Barbie caravan, but my younger sister had actually got it instead. Yes. Um, and you can probably tell that I still haven't fully recovered from that childhood trauma. It'll probably take years. So in this case, unlike in the previous story, the money my parents had invested clearly failed to buy the happiness they had hoped for. Now, what can we learn from these two stories? Well, first of all, I was a pretty weird kid. Um, but obviously, I wouldn't have embarrassed myself so badly here if there wasn't to be a great educational lesson to be learned from this. Because what these two stories actually show is that the answer to the question of whether or not money can buy happiness isn't really obvious and isn't really straightforward. So the only conclusion we can really draw so far is that it depends. Now, if you're like me, you're probably not very satisfied with that conclusion. At the very least, it would be good to know what it depends on. And this is exactly what I want to talk about today. So I want to discuss both ways in which money can and ways in which money cannot buy you greater happiness. So when I'm done talking, I really want you to have a better idea of how you can make your money work for you, work for your happiness, rather than having it the other way around. Okay, so let's start by looking at ways in which money cannot buy happiness. So what you see here is the annual household income in the US on the horizontal axis increasing from left to right, and you get the percentage of people experiencing positive effect, which is basically a measure of happiness on the horizontal axis. So let's look at what the relationship between these two variables looks like. The first thing you see is that people with very low income, so people on the left-hand side, they experience substantially lower levels of positive effect of happiness. And that makes sense, because when you think about it, um, having very little money available simply makes many aspects of life much harder. However, what you also see is that the curve flattens very quickly. So above the threshold of around $75,000 um, a year, money doesn't really do much for our happiness anymore. Now, you might be thinking, well, this scale only goes up to 180,000. Clearly, millionaires with all the money in the world and absolutely nothing to worry about will be happier, right? Well, it turns out that this is not the case. So even when you look at the very end of the income scale, money doesn't seem to affect happiness anymore. So this tells a very clear story, right? And that is that money in and by itself doesn't really do anything for our happiness. Now, don't despair, um, because there's more to the story. Because what researchers have suggested recently is that money can indeed buy happiness if we're spending it right. So the question is not how much money we have or how much money we make, but what we do with the money that's available to us. 
So what this research shows, for example, is that people are happier if they spend money on others rather than themselves, or if they spend money on experiences rather than material goods. And this is great because those are two very simple but very powerful ways in which you can actually make your money work for you and your happiness. However, this research is based on an assumption and that for me as a personality psychologist who basically studies um, how people differ from one another seems a bit overly simplistic. And that's the assumption that what makes you happy makes me happy. So the idea that the same types of spending increase happiness for everybody. I'm just going to show you an example of why I think this is a bit too simplistic. So let's take this young lady here and assume that she has a choice to either spend her money on going to a rock concert, on buying this fancy new handbag here. Now, if you think back, previous research would suggest that people are generally happier if they spend money on experiences rather than material goods. But I'm pretty sure that most of you here would agree with me that in her case, it's fairly questionable whether she would enjoy going to the rock concert more than buying herself the new handbag. Now, if we take a different person, this can actually shift immediately. So again, I'm sure that you would probably all agree that in her case, going to the rock concert is probably a better idea in terms of increasing her um, happiness than buying the handbag. So once you assume that people have their unique interests and preferences, the question that we need to answer shifts from what is the right type of spending to what is the right type of spending for this particular individual. And luckily, um, there's a well-established theory in psychology that actually helps us to answer that question. And that's the theory of psychological fit. Now, what this theory suggests is that people who experience fit in their lives are happier. For example, um, there's research showing that people are happier if they have partners who are similar to them psychologically, if they work in an environment that reflects their psychological needs, or even if they just live in a residential um, area that is in line with their psychological motivations. Now, what I have suggested um, in collaboration with my co-authors Joe Gladstone and David Stilwell is that we can take the concept of psychological fit and apply it to the context of consumption. So the hypothesis that we're putting forward is really that Money can indeed buy happiness if we spend it in line with our personality. So if we spend it in a way that money matches our most fundamental needs and preferences. Okay, so because we obviously had to test this hypothesis, what we did is we conducted a study with students at the University of Cambridge. And what we did is we gave students a personality questionnaire and we invited the students who scored among the top 30% and those who scored among the bottom 30% of extroversion to come to us in the, to the lab. And before, so basically the extroverted group with, was, was a group of students, like highly sociable, highly outgoing, when the introverted group was kind of made up of rather reserved um, and quiet students. Before we told them anything about the study, we actually gave them a happiness questionnaire to measure their baseline happiness. Which is just how happy were students in general without participating in our study at all. We then randomly assigned students in both groups to receive either a seven pound uh, voucher for the student bar, which in our case was a proxy for an extroverted product, or a seven pound voucher for a bookstore as a proxy for an introverted product. We then told students, well, go about your lives and spend the voucher within the next two days and then please stay in the bar or read the book for at least 30 minutes. And along this consumption experience, we measured students' happiness at three time points. First, once they had received the voucher. Second, when they cashed the voucher. And third, right after they had um, consumed the product for 30 minutes. So they had stayed in the bar for 30 minutes or they had read the book for 30 minutes. And just to make, to simplify the analyses, we took these three measures and we calculated an overall measure of consumption happiness that we could then compare back to students' baseline level happiness. Okay, so now let's look at what we found. So what you can see here um, is, is the change in happiness in comparison to students' baseline. 
So how did the consumption experience affect students' happiness in comparison to how happy they were before? Everything that's above the line means they got happier. Everything below the line means they got less happy. So if we start with the book condition, we have introverts in blue, extroverts in green, and the little puzzle icon just marks the matching condition. So in the case of the book voucher, the matching condition uh, was the group of introverted students. And the first thing you can see is that basically getting the, the book voucher increased happiness in both groups. So Cambridge students generally seem to appreciate getting a free book. What you also see is, as expected, like the level of happiness increased more strongly in the matching conditions. So the blue bar is higher than the green bar. Now, when we look at the bar condition, Again, here we have extroverts in green, that's the matching condition, and what we see here is a somewhat more divergent pattern. Because while happiness increased for extroverted students, it decreased for introverted students. Which means that sending those poor introverts to the bar to have fun with their friends um, not only failed to increase their happiness, but it actually made them miserable. So next time you think about dragging your introverted friend to the bar, well, think twice, you might traumatize them for life, just like my parents did uh, with the Barbie caravan. Okay, so but this was generally good news. So these results seem to support our general idea that spending money in a way that matches your personality can actually increase happiness. And no study is perfect, and there were three limitations um, to our little experiment here. First one is we only looked at one personality trait, so we only looked at extroversion. Second one is that we only studied two products. So we only looked at the bar voucher and the book voucher. And the third one is that it's highly questionable whether Cambridge students are actually representative of the general population. Now, having spent three and a half years there and looking at myself today, I have to say I highly, highly doubt it. So what we did is we followed up with a second study in which we collaborated with an international bank. And together with the bank, we recruited 625 UK citizens to take part in a survey that measured their life satisfaction and it also measured their personality on five distinct personality traits. Now, at the end of the survey, we asked participants whether they would be willing to share with us their bank transaction data for the six months preceding the survey. So we could look at participants spending in 59 categories to get an idea of what they and how they spent their money on as they went about their everyday lives. So we knew, for example, how much money they had spent on music, uh, how often they had gone to the pub, uh, or whether or not they were paying off a mortgage at that time. Now, what did we find? So again, the hypothesis was that the better the fit between a person's personality and their overall spending, so their spending across these 59 categories would increase life satisfaction and happiness. And this is exactly what we found. So better, the better the fit, the higher the self-reported life satisfaction of participants after these six months. And what's interesting, and also in line with what I discussed earlier, is that neither income nor the total amount that participants had spent over these six months actually was related to life satisfaction. So it really doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you spend. What matters is that you spend the money that's available to you in the right way. Now you might be thinking, well, how can I use these insights to really maximize the happiness that I gain from my own consumption experience? And the way that I see it, there's basically two things you have to do. The first one is, well, not to lay down a die, as this image here might suggest, but actually to know yourself. So just take a few minutes, sit down, and think about what really motivates and drives you. So do you like to be constantly surrounded by other people, or would you rather spend most of the time by yourself? Or do you like to go out and explore, or would you rather go back to the same place again and again? And if you want to do that in a slightly more systematic way, um, and learn about your personality, the way that psychologists think about it, we have developed a website that's called Discover My Profile, where you can take free psychological tests, personality tests, and then get immediate feedback on your responses. So check it out if you want. Why is this step important? It's important 
because the more you know about yourself, the better you understand yourself, the easier it'll, it'll be for you to then identify the types of spending that are in line or that speak to these motivations in the second step. So once you have a clear idea of your personal needs and preferences, this will be pretty easy and you won't find it too difficult to really find suitable ways of spending your money. Okay, so the, the message that I want you to take away from this talk is really that it doesn't depend, it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter how much money you spend. What really matters is, is that you spend what you have available in the right way. So money alone won't buy you happiness. But if you manage to spend it in a way that really speaks to your needs and fulfills your motivations, then there's a pretty good chance that your money will actually help you to buy happiness. Thank you.